So these are the answers to the video dealing with explosives. So we're going to start off by thinking about the explosive decomposition of nitroglycerin to give these products here. Carbon dioxide, water, nitrogen and oxygen. Lots of gas, hence the explosion. Now, the molecular formula of nitroglycerin is C3H5N3O9. And to help you balance the equation, I said let's have four equivalents of this compound here. Now, to balance an equation, we have to find atoms where all of the atoms get converted into a single product. So, for example, all of the carbon ends up in the carbon dioxide. So 12 carbons here means we must have 12 carbon dioxides here. All of the hydrogen ends up as water. So 20 hydrogens here must end up as 10 waters over here. All of the nitrogen ends up as nitrogen gas. So 12 nitrogens must give 6 nitrogen gas. And the final thing to balance then is the oxygen. On this side, we have 36 oxygens. Here, we have 24, 34 oxygens. So 36, 34. So there must therefore be, to balance this equation, one molecule of oxygen gas. So four equivalents of nitroglycerin go to 12 carbon dioxide, 10 water, 6 nitrogens, 1 oxygen, a large volume of gas, hence the explosion. Now, there's another concept that can help us to understand the chemistry of what's happening in nitroglycerin. And this concept is the idea of an oxidation level. Look at this carbon here. This carbon is bonded to one oxygen, two carbons, and a hydrogen. We would say that the oxidation level of this carbon is one. It has one bond to a heteroatom. If we look at this carbon, it's bonded to two hydrogens, a carbon, and an oxygen. Once again, it has one bond to a heteroatom. So it has an oxidation level of one. This carbon here, exactly the same thing. It has one bond to a heteroatom. The oxidation level is one. Now let's look at the carbon in the product carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has one, two bonds to this oxygen, one, two bonds to this oxygen. It has four bonds to oxygens. So the oxidation level of carbon dioxide is four. So in this decomposition, the carbon is converted from oxidation level one to oxidation level four. And that is an oxidation reaction. We are oxidizing the carbon. Meantime, the thing that's being reduced is the nitrogen. All these bonds to oxygen disappear and it only forms nitrogen gas. We're now going to look at the mechanism by which nitroglycerin is formed. And this is going to be our first foray into thinking about curly arrow mechanisms and how we can understand organic reactivity. Now I'm going to tell you that nitric acid and sulfuric acid, when you mix them, form HSO4 minus, because this sulfuric acid gives its proton away to the nitric acid, and that product breaks down into water and NO2 plus. And NO2 plus is the reactive species in this mechanism. And so I'll draw it down like this. Now, if we want to show a curly arrow mechanism, the curly arrows are showing the movement of pairs of electrons. It's electrons that control organic chemistry. Where do we start our curly arrows from? We have to start them from a source of electrons. And good sources of electrons are negative charges, lone pairs, or multiple bonds. Where do they move towards? They move towards electron-poor regions and molecules. They move towards positive charges. They move towards delta-positive charges. And ultimately, they want to end up on electronegative atoms. Electrons want to flow towards electronegative atoms where the electrons are happy. So let's look at glycerol reacting with this species here. 
If we look at this for the source of electrons, there's no negative charges, but there are lone pairs on the oxygens. And so the lone pair can push with a curly arrow towards that positive charge. And then because nitrogen cannot have five bonds, and the curly arrow represents the formation of a bond, we have to break a bond, and of course the electrons will want to end up on the electronegative oxygen atom. So let's just draw the product of that process. We have oxygen, it'll still have a hydrogen attached, it's also made this new bond to the nitrogen, and the nitrogen has pushed the electrons on to that electronegative oxygen. This oxygen, which has used its lone pair up in forming the bond, must have developed a positive charge. Of course, this doesn't look very stable. Oxygen with three bonds here. And we can push this pair of electrons to the positive charge. We're removing a proton from the molecule. And that gives us the product here, which is the nitrated alcohol. And so we form this new functional nitrate group. We can then do exactly the same thing using the lone pair here, attacking another equivalent of the NO2+, and the lone pairs here, attacking another equivalent of the NO2+. And in this kind of reaction, we call the source of electrons a nucleophile. It wants to attack a nucleus, and we call the positively charged species an electrophile. It loves electrons. And this is our first simple mechanistic example of a nucleophile attacking an electrophile using curly arrows to show how bonds are made and broken. So why is cyclopropane explosive? Well, this is the structure of propane. It's open chain form and all the bond angles in propane are 109 and a half degrees. Tetrahedral carbon atoms to space its four bonds out equally want a bond angle of 109 and a half degrees. If we try and turn propane into cyclopropane, what we have to somehow do is form a bond between these two terminal carbon atoms. And what you can see, the only way that it's possible to do that is to increase and introduce an awful lot of strain into the molecule. We've got to effectively bend those bonds. And with these, this model, I almost really can't do it. The ring keeps breaking apart. A cyclopropane ring would have a bond angle of 60 degrees. That's incredibly strained. There's too much explosive potential in cyclopropane because of ring strain and eclipsing strain between hydrogen atoms. Finally, the degradation of the terrorist favourite acetone peroxide, C9H18O6. It will degrade into carbon dioxide and water, simple products. Unlike the nitro-containing explosives, this requires a source of oxygen to combust. We want to balance this equation. Nine carbons must come to nine carbons. Eighteen hydrogens must come to eighteen hydrogens, so nine waters. In total, that gives us eighteen oxygens, twenty-seven oxygens altogether. We have six oxygens in here. That must mean we need twenty-one oxygens in here. That's ten and a half molecules of oxygen. We could, if you prefer, double the numbers. 2, 21, 18, 18, so we have an integer balanced equation. These oxygen-oxygen bonds are so weak and explosive because the lone pairs on oxygen repel one another. And that gives a very low bond strength here. And that's one of the reasons that this molecule wants to fly apart so readily and is so dangerous.